mean, at this point, we need to go play and win. And we need to prepare well, watch film, meet, practice well, and, and that breeds confidence in, in playing well on Saturday. And regardless of who we play, wherever we play, it doesn't really matter right now. As I, I told the defense yesterday, if you're a competitor, regardless of who you line up against, you, we're going to play well, and, and we need to go do the things you've got to do from an execution standpoint and effort standpoint in order to put yourself in a position to win the game, and that's what we need to do right now. Well, it's always that for for me. I mean, it's always about Texas. We need to focus on Texas and improve Texas, and the other things will handle themselves. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's tough to to, to look at it like that. But uh, uh, again, you know, we just we we went into the game knowing we we couldn't give up explosive plays, and. and uh, and when you play an offense that throws the ball well and you play a, what I call a rhythm quarterback, the ball's out quick, uh, you, it's, you know, people talk about, well, why don't we pressure more? Well, when they're in 20 personnel, they're in seven-man protection. You're, you're not going to get there. All right, and then in a lot of their 10 personnel passing game, the ball is out quick. Uh, so you got to cover more and mix pressure, which we did. And we felt like, and, you know, you look at the game, we had 10 hits and uh, 12 pressures on the quarterback. Uh, and that's out of 45 attempts, it's really one, one of four times he drops back. So our pressure was not bad. Uh, we just needed to tie up some, some technical issues on the back end as far as how we were playing some things, especially in one personnel grouping going into the game, which was on me. But, uh, you know, just, just be technical about what we did and what we didn't do well and, and, and look at how we could have played some things and some pattern matches a little bit better. Well, you know, the way we play, and, and, and I tell those guys all the time, the hardest position to play on defense is corner, especially in our defense. And we're going to put you in some tough situations. Uh, you know, and, and uh, we had good coverage. It's a heck of a throw and catch. I mean, Justin Blackman's going to play in the NFL for a long time, and so is Aaron Williams. And, and the quarterback's a good player. And, you know, they have scholarships too. And it's sometimes hard for us to understand that. But they made a nice play, and we had good coverage. And I'd call the same defense again in the same situation and let it happen again. And I, I don't, I don't lose confidence after one play in, in what happens with a young man. And I got all the confidence rolled in AJ and a lot in all of our players and in, in, in what we're doing defensively. No, I think, you know, we constantly defensively are always quality control with what we've accomplished and what we've, you know, not accomplished as far as the, the pros and the cons. So uh, we're constantly looking at what we're doing from the scheme standpoint, from putting the guys in the right spots. And, and uh, you know, we, we continually do that and, you know, uh, we'll work through that in December and January regardless of our time frame and where we are. So that's something that's a, that's a continual process. I don't know anything about the offense. So They're very uh, – you know, I think uh, Coach Snellenberger obviously philosophically has a certain uh, balance he wants offensively in the run in the pass. He believes in a two-back running game for the most part. Uh, the play action's off of that. The pocket movement's off of that. Very similar to what we faced in 08. Daryl Jackson's our offensive coordinator who was their receivers coach at the time. Uh, Gary Nord left to go to uh, Purdue. So uh, very similar philosophically. And a lot of that, I think, comes obviously from the head coach and you know, him being an offensive coach and a great teacher of quarterbacks over the years. So, uh, but, but very similar offensively to what they do. Jeff Van Camp's very similar to quarterback to what they've uh, had in the past. And uh, a big quarterback that, that can throw the ball vertically down the field, does a nice job with the ball fakes and the pocket movement. So uh, we just got to do a good job with our eye control as far as the play action things are concerned. We got to do a nice job stopping the run. It's more of a traditional run game as opposed to what we've been facing recently. So we're looking forward to just getting back out and playing. Well, he's just a physical guy. I mean, he's a low center of gravity uh, runner that, uh, you know, he's averaging right at five yards a carry. So he pushes the pile well. He's a, got, got a good initial quickness in the hole. So he's a guy that we just need to, need, need to go play. We need to go play well. 
I think Alex has done a really good job. You know, he weighs 262 pounds. And, uh, you know, there's no question that when teams look at our depth chart, they see that and they understand that. I mean, when you're sitting there 10, 10 days before the season starts and you realize you got, you're got searching for answers at that position and we've moved Alex. Alex has done a tremendous job. And I think his continued week to week has really improved his pad level, improved his strike, and especially in, during the season when you, your, your body wears down some, he's continued to get stronger and worked on those things. And I think the off season is going to be key for him. But I'm very excited about his progress. And I really think that's where his growth is going to take him is to that position. And he's a very athletic three technique. Uh, so I'm proud of the effort and, and, and the attitude and his approach to everything. And uh, he's a fine young man. And uh, I'm just real pleased with where he is and his progress. And uh, we just got to keep pressing forward and getting more production inside overall. Yeah, I don't think he gets flustered about a whole lot, that's for sure. Um, you know, his heart rate stays about 40 there. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't go real you know, high. But um, but that's a good thing, and, and everybody's different, and there's a key to every kid. And we've, uh, you know, he, he's got a great motor on the field. He plays hard. It's important playing at Texas for him. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, again, I, I'm very proud of him in, in making this move. But people don't really understand when the, 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 the closer you move to the ball, the a lot more violent and fast and bigger it becomes. And and that's why it's so hard for young guys to play inside. And especially that, and Lamar Houston went through it. Uh, Lamar went through that for a year, his junior year. I mean, he was okay. I mean, we, we didn't get the type play we needed out of him. His senior year had a great year. So it just takes some time to understand the blocking schemes and how quickly it happens in there, especially with the size of the bodies. Ashton's coming along. You know, he played, I think, 10 or 12 snaps uh, Saturday. We're gaining more confidence in him. And, again, it's just more of a, a work ethic standpoint for him. It's, he's got the talent, got ability. He's got to learn to work every day. He's got to learn to do it every day. He's got to learn to come to practice every day and practice and perform every day to give us the confidence to play him more because he has the ability. And uh, we feel like that, uh, you know, Greg Daniels and Taylor Bible and Darius Cotton are some guys that aren't playing right now. We're trying to work them in the weight room as far as getting their bodies ready for the next season, and, and that's kind of where we are. Well, it, Ryan's done a great job. Had a touchdown there the other night. Was a was a, a good play for the Longhorns there. No, Kenny's played very well for us the entire season. You know, Kansas State, he was more we, – we put him on an island man-to-man -man when we were in our eight-man box that people didn't understand. So – but he was he was basically locked in coverage the entire game. This game was a little different as far as the game plan was concerned, and he was a lot more involved at the point of attack as opposed to a week ago. So he played very solid uh, really for the last two weeks and really for the entire season. He's put together a nice season for us. And playing multiple spots too. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Well, I think that uh, I think that's a great question, and I, I think that sometimes as a coach, you, you you continue to search for answers, and not everybody's mo everybody's motivated a little differently, uh, regardless of what profession you're in. Um, that's something I've looked at a lot, especially in the off season, as far as from a leadership standpoint of being able to motivate masses and then motivate the individual. Um, but it's tough, and, and and a lot of times it's got to come from within the team as well, and, and a lot of time the. the the peer pressure is a lot more than what I can say or do at times. My stuff falls on deaf ears after a while. And so eventually it's got to come from within. You've got to be a self-starter, number one. Uh, but it also can come from your peer leadership and your, your teammates as much as anything. And that's where we're just trying to, again, press forward guys to do that a little bit more. And I just, you know, I can look at my past at Texas and you look at a Roy Miller and a Brian Arakapo and a Sergio Kendall and a Lamar Houston 